In this video, you're gonna learn how to create a link between the image uploaded and the user who actually uploaded it. Right now, all of the avatar pictures are being dumped into a directory, and there's no link between the user who created it and the image that was uploaded. This route isn't even behind authentication, so those are all things we wanna fix. We'll start by putting the route behind authentication, then we'll create a place on the user model for the image data to be stored, and finally, we'll be creating a separate route that authenticated users can use to delete a profile picture they've set. So let's go ahead and talk about how we're gonna get all of this done. Step one is to set up authentication. Adding authentication is gonna be just as simple as it's been for all of the other routes we've worked with. Now the only difference is that this route already has one piece of middleware in place that is Malter, all we're going to do is add our authentication middleware before. So we wanna make sure they're authenticated before we worry about accepting their upload. Because if they're not authenticated, we would never accept the upload. So right here, that is auth followed by a comma. So now we are passing multiple arguments to post. We have first the path, then we make sure they're authenticated. Then we go ahead and validate and accept the upload. Right here, we send back the success message, and down below, we handle any errors that might occur when the upload was processed. So this is step number one. The next step is to figure out where exactly we're going to store that image. We're actually not gonna store it on the file system for the project like we've been doing so far. The reasoning behind this is that almost all deployment platforms require you to take your code and push it up to the repository on their servers. We saw this with Heroku and the same would be true if you were using something like AWS. So the file system actually gets wiped every time you deploy, which means that we would lose data when we deployed. We would lose those user images. So instead of storing them on the file system, we're actually gonna add a field onto the user model to store the image binary data. That means we're gonna make a very small change to the user model over here. After tokens or before, the order doesn't matter, we're gonna be setting up a new field which we can call avatar, and we're only going to configure this with a type. So right here, the type is going to be capital B buffer. This is going to allow us to store the buffer with our binary image data right in the database alongside of the user who the image belongs to. Now we don't need to make this required as we're not gonna make profile pictures required. They'll be completely optional and there's no need to perform any validation since Malter already takes care of that for us. This is actually the only change we need to make to the user model. So we can go ahead and save this file and figure out how we're actually gonna get access to the data over here. Now, what would be ideal is the ability to actually access the binary data right here. We would update the user profile and use that save method we've used so many times before to save the changes to the database. The problem is that our route handler, this function right here, it does not get access to the file data that was uploaded. That's because Malter runs first and it processes the image, saving the image to the avatar's directory. Now, Malter does give us a way to actually access the data inside of here, and all we need to do to get that done is remove the dest property from our options object up above. When we do this, the Malter library is no longer gonna save images to the avatar's directory. Instead, it's simply going to pass that data through to our function so we can do something with it. We could save it to the file system if we wanted to, but in this case, we don't. We wanna save it on the user profile. So now we're still gonna have Malter process the image data and validate it as we've set up above, but it will pass the validated data through to our callback function so we can access it. The data is accessible on request.file. This is an object which contains all of those properties we explored before about the file, and we're gonna be using one called buffer. Buffer contains a buffer of all of the binary data for that file, and this is exactly what we want access to. So this is something that once again, we can only access in our handler when we don't have that dest option set up. The next thing we're going to do 
is actually take this value and store it on the user avatar field. So over here, request.user.avatar is going to equal whatever is on request.file.buffer. And the last thing we need to do is save the user profile since we just made a change to it. So I'll use await with request.user.save like we've done plenty of times before. Now if I do want to take advantage of await, all I need to do is make sure I am working in an async function. I'm currently not, but I can add async up front of the arrow function definition to change that. So at this point, Multer is processing the data passing it through to our function. We're storing the file data on the avatar field and saving it. And what I'd like to do from here is actually test our work and make sure it's working as expected. What I'm going to do is save this file and try to upload a new avatar. Over inside of Postman, I already have my upload avatar request and I'm uploading the data correctly like we were doing earlier. And I'm already authenticated because I've created this request in the task app collection and under authorization, it's inheriting it from the parent, which we set up a few sections ago. That means all I need to do is actually send this off to have the data added on to the user profile. Now, when it comes to what we send back from this request, it doesn't really make much sense to send anything back though. You could, if you wanted to, in this case, we can send back an empty body with the 200 status code so they know that things went well. Now, at this point, I would expect to see an avatar field on the user in the database. What I'm gonna do is head over to Robo3T for the first time in a little while, and I'll refresh the user's collection. I have a single user, and if I crack them open down near the bottom, what do I have? I have that avatar field with my binary data right here. Now, for the moment, we're not going to worry about creating a route to actually serve this image up. That's something we'll focus on in the next lesson. For the moment, what we can do is just copy this binary data to the clipboard and write a little HTML in the browser so you can see what it would take to render the image. What I'm going to do is right click my document and click edit document. And what we're looking for here is the avatar binary data. Now down below we have avatar. When we use the buffer type, it's actually set to an object and the dollar sign binary property. That's what contains our data. So I need everything starting right here to the very end of this quote. So what I'm going to do is highlight a part of it. Then using the scroll bar, I'll go all the way to the bottom and I will shift click right at the end just before that closing quote to highlight everything. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard and that is the binary image data. Now we can go ahead and click cancel to close down the editor and we're going to move into the browser for just a moment. We're going to go over to one of those websites that allow you to write a little bit of markup and then see it. We have things like CodePen, JS Bin, Code Sandbox, and dozens of others. I'm going to use JS bin, which is just the tool I've used the most. Now, right here by default, we see HTML, JavaScript, and the rendered output. We're going to go ahead and close down the JavaScript tab as we're not going to need it. All we need to do is be able to write some HTML like an H1 tag and see it rendered over here. Now what we're going to do is set up an image tag and render an image based just off of our binary data. For the image, we have to set the source attribute. Now, typically this would be a URL, a path to where the image lives and the browser would fetch it and render it to the screen. We can also though provide binary data right here to render the image without needing to make that extra request. Right here to get that done, we first start by specifying what exactly we're providing. It's not a URL, it's data. So that is data colon followed by the type of data in this case, it is image forward slash JPG. If it was a PNG, it would be image forward slash PNG. Next up after a semicolon, it is the encoding. Our data is base 64 encoded, which just removes special characters that typically cause problems with things like URLs. Then after a comma, what do we provide? This is where we provide our binary data. So this prefix makes sure the browser knows how to render the data we're providing it. Then we simply paste in that data. Now over here on the right hand side, we have a gray box. That's just because our image is really, really big, 
But if I scroll around, we can indeed find the profile picture our robot's face. So using our binary data, we can render images in the browser by just specifying the URL structure like this. This is one way we can show those profile pictures. We request the user's profile, we grab the avatar data, and we dump it into an image element. Now that we've seen this, we're going to wrap up the video with a challenge where you're going to set up a route for deleting that data from the user profile. In the next video, we'll talk about how we can create a URL to serve those images up. But for now, let's go ahead and talk about what I'd like you to do for the challenge, and I'll paste the challenge comments right here down below. Right here, your goal is to set up a route allowing someone to delete the avatar they've previously uploaded. You're going to start by setting up the route delete forward slash users forward slash me forward slash avatar. So essentially it's the same request structure up above, but we're swapping out post for delete. And you're also going to add authentication as we need to know which user we are deleting the avatar for. In the actual route handler, all you have to do is set the correct field to undefined, save the user document to wipe that data, and finally send back something like a 200. There's no need to send back an actual response body, the status code is enough. Last up, test your work. Create the new request for the task app collection in Postman, fire it off for the user, and then check the data in the database. They should no longer have that avatar field showing up. Pause the video, knock this out, you can add the new route right here. When you're done, come back and click play. How'd that go? Let's go ahead and get started by calling router.delete to set up the route and the URL is forward slash users forward slash me forward slash avatar as we are deleting the avatar for ourselves. Next up, we do want authentication, so I'll add that in right now, followed by our function. I plan on using await inside of there, so I'll set it up as an async function. And from inside of here, the goal is to start by wiping the avatar field on user. So request dot user dot right here avatar will get set equal to undefined. When we wanted to save a profile picture, we set that field. When I want to delete it, I clear that field. Next up, we have to make sure to save that user profile. So I will await a call to request dot user dot save. And next up, we can go ahead and use response dot send to send back a 200 request. Now from here, we have knocked out steps one, two, and three. The last thing we need to do is to test our work and make sure this actually functions correctly. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the challenge comments. I'll make sure to save the user router and we're gonna head over to Postman and give this a try. So I have to create the new request, which I will do by adding it to the task app collection. I can call this whatever I'd like. I'll go ahead and call it something like delete avatar. I'm going to create it. Down below it shows up. I'll crack that open and customize it to fit my needs. This does indeed use delete. And the structure starts with the URL stored in the environment variable, followed by forward slash users forward slash me forward slash avatar. Now authorization is already set up right here in this tab, so we're good to go. We can actually fire the request off. I'm going to send this off using Postman. I get a 200 back and we can verify it actually worked by looking at the database. Over in Robo3T, I have my avatar. I use Command R to refresh it. I crack that open again and now the avatar is gone, which is fantastic. So now when we are uploading avatars, those are getting uploaded and saved as part of the user profile. And we've also provided a user with the ability to delete their profile picture if they don't want it anymore. Now, if I simply wanted to change my profile picture, I could just use this request again to actually get that done. So if I was creating a front end application for this task app, this route right here would be used for creating an avatar and for updating it. And the one below would be used for just wiping it. There's no need to wipe before saving. 
Now that we have this in place, we are all done for this lesson. In the next video, we're going to explore some of the ways we can serve up this image data so it can actually be accessed and used by our client. I'm excited to get to that, so let's jump right in to the next one.